हेलो स्टूडेंट्स गुड मॉर्निंग टू एवरीवन वेलकम टू आवर इलेक्ट्रिकल एंड इलेक्ट्रॉनिक्स मेजरिंग इंस्ट्रूमेंट्स क्लास ऑन कंटिन्यूएशन ऑफ आवर क्लास टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू लर्न वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट एंड वेरी फेमस useful instrument used in our laboratories is known as permanent magnet moving coil instrument mc coil simply we can say mc instruments moving coil instruments as you know that in our electrical laboratory while performing our experiments on dc motors we required voltmeters and ohmmeters these meters are worked based on two principles one is moving coil instruments and moving iron instruments moving coil instruments are very accurate and uniform scale 90 percentage preferred to measure a dc voltage and current with the help of moving coil instruments if it is not available then we go for moving iron instruments which can measure dc as well as ac today we are going to learn moving coil instrument basic parts of instrument construction working principle and its salient points let us see so this class is regarding to third semester c18 ee 304 now what we have seen in previous classes in the previous class we have learnt about the basics of measuring instruments what are the types of instruments absolute instruments secondary instruments absolute instruments are the standard instruments which can give the the reading with deflection into multiplication of meter constant whereas second instruments directly it will gives the reading in the form of deflection whereas absolute instruments are very standard instruments no need to calibrate and it can be used in r&d research and development where a precision is required more otherwise so 90% of instruments are generally used in second instruments those are very cheap and best and easily available and portable are these further classified into indicating instruments recording instruments and integrating instruments we have seen and in indicating instruments what are the main essential the parts of a instrument as we know that we require the moving mechanism that is a torque is required torque is required some force is required to move the pointer from initial position to final position and pointer is required calibrated scale is required jewelry bearings is required control tarring purpose springs is required some small amount of the weight is required and these are the different parts required the main electrical point of view we are going to produce some excited energy 
input energy which can move the pointer from zero position to the final position we can say that type of the force or torque we can say it is a deflecting torque once deflecting torque produces inside the instrument it will try to move the pointer at the same time we require the another two of the two type of torques that is controlling torque and damping torque the controlling torque is used to control the deflecting torque it is acted in opposite to the deflecting torque which is produced by the energies or effects what are the effects we have seen magnetic effect electromagnetic effect electromagnetic is induction effect electrostatic effect thermal energy hot energy hall effects and heat energy chemical energy different the energy sources required to produce the deflecting torque this deflection torque is opposed by controlling torque otherwise due to the deflection torque the pointer overshoots the total full scale deflection at the same time whenever there is no deflection torque the pointer has to come to the zero position so we require the controlling torque the controlling torque can be produced by two methods one is spring control method another is the gravity control method in spring control method phosphorus branch hair springs are generally used helical sp sp helical springs are two numbers are used which is attached to the spindle and top and bottom of the coil in opposite directions we have seen and where if you are using the spring control torque so where deflecting torque the directly proportional theta and tc controlling torque directly proportional theta so if it is not possible we can use a, some small amount of the weight which can be con controlled we can adjust it so that is known as the gravity control method by using gravity control we are going to produce the controlling torque which is also opposite to the deflection torque but in this case the theta the deflection torque controlling torque is directly proportional to sin theta so here yeah. and these two controlling torques either of this one can be used in a instrument in addition to this controlling torque we are going to use another type of the torque is the damping torque the damping torque which is used to nullify the oscillations at the final position of the pointer and this damping torque can be produced by air friction damping fluid friction damping and eddy current damping we have seen with examples also and we have seen the frequent errors what are the different of the errors takes place in instruments also we have seen in last class now coming to the practical point of view we are going to learn so instruments main instruments are generally dominating in our electrical field to measure the dc supply that is moving coil instrument let us see today our objectives on completion of this period you would be able to know about construction of pmmc instrument permanent magnet moving coil instruments the working principle of a pmmc instruments and it's a some saline pants you can see here this is a permanent magnet moving coil instruments this is a instrument now here so a permanent magnet u shaped magnets are generally used in our instrument u shaped permanent magnet one and act as a north pole and one and as a south pole as we know in school level also from north pole to south pole there is a magnetic lines of forces and in between there is a magnetic field in that area we are going to produce placed one coil which is placed in between in magnetic field 
this coil energized from outside variable quantity which is to be measured through two springs and based on motor principle the pointer move on a calibrated scale this is a concept this concept can be here and we can see now we can see in details this one one by one need not to hurry now what is the basic principle of permanent magnet moving coil instruments here permanent magnets as you know that in first year level you have learned that the permanent magnets are generally made with up with all nickel materials alloy aluminum nickel and cobalt alloy generally used to make this permanent magnet a permanent magnet moving coil instruments works on a dc motor principle what is that you can see the figure as you remember that thing whenever a current carrying conductor placed in a magnetic field the conductor experiences mechanical force and tend to deflect that's the motor principle whenever a current carrying conductor that means current carrying conductor is nothing but it behaves as a magnetic field around the conductor this magnetic field placed in a permanent magnets north pole and south pole you can see here this is the north pole and south pole already magnetic field is field here i placed the one coil through which i given the supply the current is passing through the coil it establishes the magnetic field and the coil magnetic field and the stationary magnetic field so stationary magnetic field phi s that is act as a north pole and south pole and versus and coil magnetic field which is the coming from the outside supply these two fields interaction takes place there is a repulsion and attraction torque is produces due to this torque so interaction takes place because the coil is placed on a jewelry bearings frictionless bearings at both sides so it act as a rotor so due to the magnetic state or magnetic field try to move the rotor magnetic field one direction due to this one spindle will move one direction once spindle moves it is placed on a it is connected with a, a pointer the pointer will rotate on a calibrated scale this is a basic concept now what is happening whenever a current whenever a current here okay so once again you can see it this is connected to supply now whenever a current passes through this coil it produces its magnetic field already due to the north pole and south pole there is a magnetic field so this magnetic field produces an interaction takes place with the permanent magnet field there is a torque is developed due to the torque the rotor that is a coil which is placed on a jewelry bearings frictionless bearings and try to move in one direction and spindle moves for example here spindle is moved due to the movement of the spindle the spindle the pointer also attached to the spindle and the pointer will moves on a calibrated scale the deflection the angle of deflection depend on the input excitation if the current value is more more deflection will take place current is less less deflection will take place this is a basic principle of moving coil instrument 
same principle we have seen in secondary level DC machines DC motor DC motor also here what will happen that there is a north pole south pole in between there is an armature when DC supply is given to the armature it establishes the magnetic field and stator magnetic field and rotor magnetic field so there is a torque is developed due to the armature is placed on a bearings then rotor will rotate in one direction same instead of armature here is the coil if there is stator north pole south pole here place the two permanent magnets the similarity between the DC motors and PMMC instrument now let us see in details also with each part now principle once again you can see this one so what are the uh, different parts if you are going to the internal inside of the machine that is the instrument so you can see the one north pole and south pole in between north pole to south pole there is a magnetic lines of forces in between there is a coil is placed and coil is placed on a spindle and spindle is placed you can see here everything is uh, available in the uh, theoretically and now it is placed in the spindle the spindle is placed in the springs provided both top and down and here is the bearings are provided these are also this is a spindle on which there is a jeweler bearings and this is a controlling torque purpose we are placed the the phosphorus branch springs the controlling springs this is the permanent magnet north pole and this is the south pole now you can see here the positive supply is given to the top to the coil through the spring the current is passing through the coil 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 after that it is coming to the another spring and is going this direction that means current is entering current is leaving then once the current is passing through this coil it also establishes its own magnetic field here the magnetic field of stator magnetic field of rotor the interaction takes place it will try to move in one direction let us assume the spindle is moving in clockwise direction once spindle moves on clockwise direction the spindle is also attached to the this pointer the pointer will move on a calibrated scale okay so this is a motor principle nothing but a small motors a pony motors but we are using it as a instrument just you can see it in case of you know hose if you are observing there is a fan okay you can see so here ceiling fan so what will happen there is a regulator in regulator you are going to operate 1 2 3 4 5 once regulator is one position the fan will rotate slowly if regulator is a second position the fan will rotate somewhat speed and 3 somewhat speed higher speed 4 increase speed 5 full speed it will rotate now here we are going to control voltage across the fan with the help of the regulator so or we are going to control the input supply whether it is current or voltage due to this one the fan speed changed similarly if at knob at one position small amount of the current is coming due to the voltage drop in the regulator and corresponding that excitation the fan will rotate at the speed of for example 300 rpm if at two position some of the initial resistance cut down and current increases and it now it is a speed is increased to the 400 rpm at 3 the 450 rpm at 5 so 450 so 4 300 400 500 600 700 rpm for example ultimate that means the speed is changing 
by changing the regulator that is input excitation how the input excited if the current comes more it will runs speed similarly our instrument also if current comes less amount of value that is flowing in the coil the deflection also small small deflection that is the angle is equal to some angle is equal 10 degrees if the current increased input current increased then deflection further increases then deflection increase to the instead of 20 degrees it is going to the 20 degrees if current comes more than 30 degrees current comes further more is a 40 degrees so go on increasing that means initial value increases theta value also increase that deflection also changes that means input current directly proportional to the input current that input current that's the input what is the, that one here so directly proportional to the that is the theta or you can why theta because here you can see what is the formula here whatever the current entering that current will produce the current directly proportional to the flux produced in the coil because this flux and this flux interaction takes place now more current more flux more flux then flux also depend upon the what is the flux depend upon the current or you can say flux and this flux directly proportional to the theta because more current more flux develops more flux more deflection takes place then we can say directly this current is directly proportional to the theta okay it is the depend upon the flux due to the flux deflection so more current more flow more flux more flux more interaction more deflection that is the due to this one more moment of the pointer that's the theta angle also increases so we can say that so directly the input value directly proportional to the theta angle of deflection small under the current so based on this one we are calibrated the scale then we are note down the whether it is a uh, 10 volts 10 amps or 20 amps 13 amps depend upon that thing okay now see the assembled isometric view of permanent magnet moving coil instruments so what is actually this one so as we know that this is a simple if you're going to inside this is a theoretical one this is a practical this is a theoretical one this is a practical one you see the see the u-shaped magnet is connected here red color is the u-shaped magnet and there is a coil rectangular coil so inside there is a rectangular coil there is a spindle here is also a spindle and there is a jewelry bearings at top and bottom and there is a springs connected and bottom and so same items inside a practical mc coil you can see this one okay now this terminal which is connected to the coil connected to the, from this one and this is the coming this one input and output through the phosphorus branch springs here we connected this is the input this is the output now what is happened inside mechanism already we have seen same mechanism operated then pointer will move on the calibrated scale this pointer will move on a calibrated scale here you can observe the scale is uniform in case of the mc coil now you can see the in clarity and clearly so what is inside different parts here you can see it now so this is the u-shaped magnet north pole and south pole and there is a moving coil placed on the iron core so iron core is used in between the north pole and south pole to reduce the reluctance between the two poles here the iron pro iron core is provided on which there is an aluminum frame rectangular frame is provided on which there is a number of copper wires wound on this one 
so we can see this is known as a the coil moving coil in which the flux is developed due to the the variable which is to be measured passing through this coil now you can see the the light indicator that is a pointer you can see the pointer and this is the reading scale calibrated scale and here there is a mirror is also used to avoid the parallax error and air spring also used at top and bottom so we have to we have to use a two springs and top and bottom phosphorus branch spring this is a permanent magnet these are the main parts in a pmc instruments okay now we can see let us see in one by one details what is the material used what is the purpose of this one okay now construction of permanent moving instrument it consists of u shaped permanent magnet so u shaped permanent magnet already we have seen so here there is given the detail Sim similar support for cure and lower air springs same thing so here you can see here two springs are provided and here also you can see that this is one spring and this is the another spring and this coil you can see the red color this is the coil rectangle placed on a aluminum frame in rectangular shape this is just like rectangular aluminum frame and on which sorry you can see this is a rectangular aluminum frame just like rectangle on which so we are going to winding on which the number of turns this is a input this is a output this is a coil you can see this red color color and it is connected through springs it's connected to the springs the top spring and bottom spring so you can see this is the one spring this is the other spring the springs are attached to the spindle you can, you can see the spindle attached to the spindle and pointer pointer and upper gear spring so gear also used to set the pointer zero position if you are observing in laboratory and support things everything this one okay now light rectangular coil wound on a aluminum frame it acts as a eddy current device iron core makes the field uniform and decreases the reluctance of the air path between the poles where is the iron core iron core is this one in the blue color this is a blue color it is a round shape iron core is a round shape on which we place the aluminum frame on which there is a winding so this is a placed in between so here placed the iron core this is the iron core on which coil is placed the iron core makes the field uniform and decreases the reluctance of the air path between the poles north pole south pole in between there is a this iron core and the rectangular coil is supported by jewelry bearings jewelry bearings we so here you can see the jewelry bearings is a frictionless bearings at top at both side there is a this is a spindle and this is a jewelry bearings frictionless bearings nothing but okay this is jewelry bearings friction is very very less next the pointer and control springs are attached to the spindle now this is a spindle and this is a jewelry bearings and here is the one spring is connected one direction this spring is connected another direction here the pointer is placed on the spindle and in which there is a iron core on which our coil is placed input and output okay so you can see here also so this is the u shape magnet this is a brown color is a iron core and this color is the spring 
and the springs are connected outside the terminals. This is the pointer and this is the white is the calibrated scale. The aluminum former provides support to the coil and provides a eddy current. We require the controlling torque and eddy current torque. Deflecting torque, we are going to get the input variable by quantity, whether current or voltage. And spring control, we are going to get by using the, the springs connected on both sides. And eddy current, we are going to get on aluminum frame in this case. Now, parts of permanent moving coil instruments, the permanent magnet. Magnet is made up of alloy of all nico. What is all nico? So, all nico means all aluminum, nickel and cobalt alloy. So, combination of this material. Okay, now magnet is made up of all nickel alloy and it has a low hysteresis losses and it is bent like horseshoe magnet. Magnet also plays in the horseshoe magnet. And you can see it just like is a horseshoe magnet. And you can see in the laboratory, this is the one type of the horseshoe magnet. It's a north pole and south pole. In between, there is a magnetic lines of forces, north pole to south pole. Okay, in practically you can see this all. It is they provided the some iron code pole, pole shows here. Okay, so this is a, about the magnets generally used in machines. Now, deflecting coil. So, this is a deflecting coil. What do you mean? It is worn on a aluminum frame. So, here you can see, so there is a aluminum frame is provided and on which just aluminum frame, just like this aluminum frame, it's a rectangular shape on which there is a winding wound. So, there is a winding wound on the aluminum frame. The aluminum frame is a supporting to the coil as well as acting as a eddy current torque. The coil is made up of the copper coil, thin copper coil, number of tons is more. You can see it. So, aluminum former so, it is connected to the axial of spindle, top and bottom. Okay. Now, control springs. They are made up of phosphorus branch air springs and attached to the spindle. So, you can see this is a one phosphorus branch springs, helical spring. And they are owned in opposite direction on top and bottom of the coil. So, you can see here. So, a spindle where we can use two springs are used controlling purpose. A and B places placed at both but it is a different directions. While it rotating the spindle, one of the spring is uh, twisted, one of the spring is uh, released its uh, stress. Such a way that we provided this spring. Now, coming to the pointer, aluminum pointer or tube is generally used in our instruments. So, you can see the, the different parts of a pointer. This is a pointer or pointer head and spring hole which is connected to the weight, small weight also connected and counterweight also provided on this one. And sometimes we can use the different of the pointers. The PVC plastic pointers also generally used in our small instruments. The pointer you can see here, this is a point how the arrangement takes place. So this is a fluid friction damping purpose and this is a controlling purpose and the point is more on a calibrated scale. You can see the black color which is the, here is a pointer, this is a pointer, this is another pointer and point is here placed. The aluminum frame coated and the powder coated. Sometimes we can use the lightweight 
the plastic also. Now scale. Scale graduated and painted a sheet of aluminum. Scale. This is a scale. Where you can see this is scale. And generally used in uh, graduated painted aluminum. And you can see the in real time laboratory scale. Different type of the scales for AC purpose, DC purpose, different calibration purpose. Different stages. Okay, you can see the scale. This one scale, this one scale, this one scale. Different purposes by adjusting the, the multiplying factors. Adjusting the MF of the meter. We are going to take the readings. The top scale and bottom scale, different scales. And now, dust proof case. So, these all items are placed in a dust proof frame. Otherwise, what will happen? There is a clogging takes place. Clogging takes place. Bearings may be jam it takes place due to this one some what will happen it may not show the correct reading now it is placed uh, you can see the case different the wooden case or sometimes we can use the some plastic case also they will provide that inside the all our this parts only our top terminals are produced the terminals this is the one ten, two three the terminals are used and here also we can use the different type of the terminals for the outing out purpose. Okay, these are the general parts of a machine or this is a small machine at the moment instrument. What are the main parts? Issue magnet and you can see this one animation. So this is a spring and this is a calibrated scale, dial, this is a mirror and so you can see the, the point, this is a pointer, we see moving coil and magnets and spring, dial and mirror. These are the essential parts in a moving coil instruments. What are the, what is the purpose of U-shaped magnets? We have seen what is the purpose of springs also we have seen what is the purpose of dial also we have seen and mirror also used to avoid the parallax error and the pointer also we have seen and moving coil also we have seen okay this is the main main ports in a moving coil instruments now let us see basic principle the principle of working of pmc instruments dear students you have to practice the diagram here only the construction and operation of moving coil instruments is very very easy but you have to practice the diagram so same diagram you are going to write and draw in drawing also the 10 marks question so please practice the figure now what is the how it works we know that what are the different parts of a mc coil and how they are connected now you can see the how you are going to measure the the DC load by using the one incandescent lamp connected in the circuit. The DC source is connected here 220 volts and here a DC load is the one incandescent bulb is connected and series I connected the moving coil instrument that is the ammeter is connected. Here our aim is to measure the how much current is taking from the supply by our bulb. So here it has to deflect. So you can observe. So if you are going to the, what will happen? This is the place, the current is coming to go in the, this direction. There is a positive, there is a negative terminals. Enter into the machine. And there is a performance inside the some work. Then leaving from the other terminal. And enter into the bulb is going to this one. And coming and coming enter this one. So this, that means so whatever the current is leaving from the positive terminal entered in the negative terminal through a meter and bulb connected in series. Now you can see it. Here observe it. So the current entered in the positive terminal. This is a positive terminal of a meter. This is a positive terminal of a meter. And leaving terminal negative. That is a negative. You can see it. Now whatever the current entered in the a meter now entered into this terminal. Due to this one, it is connected to the our 
first spring you can see this it connected to the spring bottom spring through the spring it is connected to the our coil and the current which is flowing through the coil so circulating circulating so number of turns then after that it will comes to the another bottom at spring lower spring from the spring it is connected to the negative terminal then it is coming here now what is inside you can see here now the current is going here and through the bulb and is going this one circuit is closed when the circuit is closed current is passing once current is passing through the coil it establishes its own magnetic field already this is a permanent magnetic fields and this magnetic field interaction takes place then this coil act as a rotor it will deflect it produce a deflecting torque the deflecting torque will try to move the spindle on a calibrated scale once it is moving on a calibrated scale the pointer will shows the reading how much deflection takes place due to this current from source to load based on this one if i connect with the one bulb it's showing the for example 1 ampere if i connect with the another lamp in parallel the current may be increased then it's showing the so 2 amperes he connected the another lamp it may be showing the 3 amperes that means each lamp is taking the 1 ampere if you are assuming if you are connected in a parallel then automatically the deflection of the ammeter also changing because current 1 ampere some deflection theta angle and 2 amperes the theta 1 angle and 3 amperes theta 3 angle that means so current increases theta also increases due to this one the pointer also moves on a calibrated scale based on this one we are going to take the what is the current taken by this load okay so this is a normal practical measurement of current in a small circuit now you can see as this current carrying coil placed in the magnetic field the coil experiences the force as you know that the as the coil attached to the spindle the spindle rotates hence the pointer moves on a calibrated scale so you can see here the assembled isometric view of pmc instruments so when the current is flowing in the coil the deflection taking place you can see it the red colors are that is the current is passing through the coil once current passing through the coil it establishes a magnetic field this field and permanent magnetic field interaction then the spindle will move so if the pointer also moving you can see the one animation okay there is a moving now so you can observe the that thing okay now why it works on a, a dc only if the current through the coil is reversed so in previous case we have what we have seen so we connected the one ammeter plus minus through the bulb and connected to the one source here then what will happen the ammeter reading will give us a deflection this direction 0 1 2 3 4 amps so deflection come in this this direction the current is passing this direction and deflection is this direction if i change this one so if i change the this is a positive this is a negative then what will happen the current is passing through this one entering entering uh, entered the air then what will happen the whatever the torque is developed is a reverse of the previous case now the deflecting torque is moved try to move this direction now so once deflecting torque is moving the pointer is pushed from zero to this direction but there is no scale here such a way that the torque is developed in the instrument if current changes the coil is reverse the torque also reverses the deflecting torque also reverse and try to move the below the zero reading but zero reading we there is no calibrated scale we cannot find the what is the actual value but we can observe what is the angle the moved by the pointer okay now hence the pointer moves in opposite direction below the zero point hence they work only when the current through the coil is a definite direction of dc supply the dc supply terminal changes the torque developed in the machine also 
changes if you connect to the positive terminal the direction is the, the clockwise direction if connected to the negative terminal the deflecting torque is the anti clockwise direction such a way that the pointer has to move from zero to pass to clockwise direction or anti clockwise direction based on the input supply whether you going to plus minus or minus plus that should be required. so this machine works only in dc only okay so now let us uh, before this one so there is a small animation figures you can see here okay so let us okay now you can see it the pmc some permanent magnet moving coil instrument some animations okay so this is a de orsonal moment is a found by scientist name now you can see the u shape magnet it's a north pole and south pole so in between we know that lines of forces from north pole to south pole total lines of forces is equal to the magnetic pull between the two poles now there is a aluminum frame white color on which there is a windings wound on a aluminum frame this aluminum frame is placed on spindle and spindle top and bottom we connected the two springs the phosphorus branch springs has connected and at the same time the spindle also provided by the pointer the pointer will deflect due to the deflecting torque in one direction let us say this is a clockwise direction okay then the controlling torque which is also required by the spring controls in the opposite direction now the deflecting torque is directly proportional to the input actuating quantity current but the controlling torque also depend upon the theta so now the deflecting torque whenever the deflecting torque is equal to the controlling torque then pointer will at stable position that means theta is directly proportional to the current which is to be measured that's why the dc machines dc instruments the scale is uniformed not cramped at starting at ending okay so this is the one small animation figure you can see it. now you can see it's another animation so there is a north pole and south pole here you can observe the permanent moving coil instruments so a north pole and south pole there is a coil so this can be used this instrument in a galvanometer galvanometer is an electro mechanical instrument used for detecting and indicating electric current flowing through a coil so it is a very sensitive electromagnetic device which can measure low currents even of the order of few micro amperes can be measured by using this galvanometer the galvanometer works as an actuator by producing a rotary deflection in response to the electric current that is the input current what are the constructional details similar to the previously we discussed now you can see what are the different parts so this is the north pole and south pole magnet north pole to south pole there is a magnetic lines of forces this are the magnetic lines of forces and this is a aluminum frame and on which there is a copper coil so a large is very thin copper coil wound at top and bottom we provided the the black color is a jewelry bearings frictionless bearings so easily the coil will rotate now this spindle we can say spindle at top and bottom we provided the springs the springs are provided on bottom one direction and another top is a another direction opposite directions we are going to install it this is a iron core so to reduce the, the reluctance between the north pole and south pole now you can see the direction the plan we work the coil north pole is a flux centering and from the south pole it reaching internally through this the our iron core as well as the coil is a linked in the coil now when supply is given from the external actuating quantity so from the outside so what is the current is passing through the coil and due to this one it is produces a magnetic field and this magnetic field and stator magnetic field interaction takes place there is a 
deflecting torque is produces. Due to the deflecting torque, it will rotate in a, any direction. What is the principle? The motor principle. The current carrying coil placed in a magnetic field, it experiences a force that is already we have seen. Okay? So, this magnetic field cuts the stationary the coil through which the current is passing through this one. Okay? Just like the generator principle. And this field and that fields, what will happen? The, there is a interaction takes place. Due to the one, some force is developed. You see the animation, good animation. They cut us it to these fellows who are made this one. Now, due to this one, the point is a coil is moving. You can see it. The pointer also moving at that one. If current goes through the coil itself only, it will move. Otherwise, it will stationary. So, the coil is moving, you can see it. So, based on the current direction, whether it is plus to minus one direction, minus to plus in another direction. So, based on this one, we can identify also not only magnitude of the current, at the same time, the direction also, the which type of the which direction the current is coming also, we can detect it by using the galvanometer. The torque produced is equal to n into i into a into b into sin theta. Where is the n is the number of turns, i is the current flowing in the coil, theta is the angle between the a b terminals and sin theta, b is the flux density. A is the area of the conductor. Now, the angle is the theta, 90 degrees is the deflection only, it is the maximum. Or sometimes we can extend this also. Now, okay, so let us summarize what we have seen in this class. So far, we have discussed today about construction of permanent magnet moving coil instruments and working principle of permanent magnet moving coil instruments and salient points of moving coil instruments where this PMC instruments can be used and its application where we are going to use as just like it is a galvanometer. So, thank you for listening my class.